So welcome to Morning Prayer if you've just joined us and a special welcome to you if you're discovering this service for the first time today. Welcome. Welcome if you're happy to leave comments so that we know that you're here. Welcome if you're just dropping in quite quietly. We're in that space between Ascension Day and Pentecost, praying with our brothers and sisters around the world with thy kingdom come, a global wave of prayer. And the invitation to us all is to pray for five people, five people to come to know the Lord. So there will be a silent space in our prayers to do that today. So I welcome you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God forever. A song of God's righteousness. Words from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 16. And the refrain is, the Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion, 
that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not fall. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. And in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He, has, he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life in your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 2, verses 27 to 35. A man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus the Lord has said, I revealed myself to the family of your ancestor in Egypt when they were slaves to the house of Pharaoh. I chose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to offer incense, to wear an ephod before me. And I gave to the family of your ancestor all my offerings by fire from the people of Israel. Why then look with greedy eye at my sacrifices and my offerings that I commanded? And honour your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choicest parts of every offering of my people Israel. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promise that your family and the family of your ancestor should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me, for those who honour me, I will honour, and those who despise me shall be treated with contempt. See, a time is coming when I will cut off your strength and the strength of your ancestors' family, so that no one in your family will live to old age. Then, in distress, you will look with greedy eye on the prosperity that shall be bestowed upon Israel, and no one in your family shall ever live to old age. The only one of whom I shall not cut off from my altar shall be spared to weep out his eyes and grieve his heart. All the members of your household shall die by the sword. The fate of your two sons, Hophni and Phineas shall be the sign to you. Both of them shall die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house and he shall go in and out before my anointed one forever. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle this morning is from Isaiah 
chapter 61. The refrain at the beginning and the end is, The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Alleluia. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they may be glorified. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall the Lord God make righteousness and praise blossom before the nations. You shall be called priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as ministers of our God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Alleluia. Our, Old Test our New Testament reading is from the Book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 37 to 47. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter, and to the other apostles. Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they brought bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. 
We'll just pause just to give us a little bit of space to think on what we've heard this morning. So for Carol this morning, it was her canticle, verse 3, the one that begins, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, verse 3, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Thank you, Carol. And for Tracy, it's the Lord is holding my right hand, I shall not fall. I always love that picture when having a, a bad day. Thank you, Tracy. I think for me it was the um, just a broad brush stroke, the huge difference between the people ministering to others between 1 Samuel and Acts. So you have, something's gone wrong in the priesthood here in the time of Samuel. And I see that as the priests are in it for what's, what's in it for me sort of thing. They've, they've gone really wrong. And I think we were talking about this yesterday or the day before in that the line of the Levites were always destined to bring forth the priests and those who would serve in the holy place. So something's gone really wrong. They should be doing that correctly and they're not. And then you go to Acts and you have a fisherman who is, he's on fire basically, isn't he? Can you imagine what it must be like to baptise 3,000 people. Now obviously Peter's got the, the, the other disciples with him, the other apostles with him. 3,000 people. And because of the way they organise their lives, they live their lives, because of the generosity of their lives, they weren't holding on to what they had they were distributing it. If there was need, they were distributing it. It takes us right back to the banks of the River Jordan and John the Baptist saying, make way. If you have two courts, give one away. Because of the generous way in which they lived, because they were learning and growing, they were following the teaching, they were breaking bread together, they were praying together. There's that wonderful line at the end. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. What a contrast. So Reverend Eileen's with us. Are the prophets' words of foretelling predestination or God's all-knowing warning that the hearts and intentions of people have brought the outcome foretold? 
I certainly feel we, we forget that God knows what's on our hearts and nothing is hidden. Thank you for that, Eileen. Judith struck by the witness of people impacting others in acts. Yes, thank you, Judith. And Eileen saying, the Old and New Testament scenes contrast man's disobedience and obedience and the outcomes absolutely. Do we follow our own hearts or do we follow the heart of the Lord? And I think there's actually a specific line in Samuel, isn't there? Um... I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. Not what's on their heart and their minds. And that's something we, we I hope, mindful of. That we are seeking God's will for his church and his people, not our own. Thank you for your comments this morning. Please feel free to continue to add them. I will. I know there's a time delay, there's a little bit of a time delay. So let's respond to our scripture this morning. Words from Romans 8, St Paul. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit. And kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. And the words of the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah, the refrain at the very beginning and the end. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that shall last. Alleluia. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that shall last. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that shall last. Alleluia. 
time now for our prayers and we will have a time of silent prayer and we are invited during this time as we get ready for Pentecost to pray for five people we would love to know Jesus love to draw closer to God and find that gift of faith In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, we are moved by scripture this morning. Moved at the ways in which you call us to be your disciples, to bring your good news, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to comfort all who are mourning. May we seek to move in these ways while drawing closer to you that we may know your heart, your will. And may we as people of faith Give our lives in prayer, fellowship. Live our lives in ways in which they become signposts to you, your goodness, your generosity, your love for us. May all who are shepherds of your people be good shepherds, wanting the very best for those people in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we know that you hold us by our right hand, no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what the situation. We pray this morning for anyone who was waking up exhausted, feeling low, or hemmed in because of difficulties with relationships, finances, struggling to keep enough food in the cupboard, or trying to work their way through debt. We're just finding there's too much month for the money. That can feel like such a prison, Lord. We pray for all captives. And we pray for churches that can respond and do your will. We want to be disciples who can truly live out lives of love.
feel of each and every one. Holy Spirit, guide us, encourage us, and open our eyes that we may see the world as the Lord does. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a time of silence, we lift to the Lord those prayers on our hearts this morning and we're also invited to pray for five pray for five Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving God, we know that as disciples we are on a journey. And we treasure those moments when we can be closer to you and perhaps understand a little more of your will for our lives. This weekend we have a new pilgrimage route from St Paul's in Jowell to Durham Cathedral and I pray Lord that people who walk part of this way, not just this weekend, but in the months and years to come. And that all who find themselves on this, the way of learning, will be blessed. We pray for all of the pilgrims getting ready to walk this weekend. Praying for Bishop Paul and his wife Rosemary, Bishop Sarah, Sheridan Boise, David Pott and his party, those of us from the parish who will be walking and those who will be welcoming and preparing refreshments along the way. Praying also for everyone at St Peter's Mulberry and Earth as they will receive the pilgrims and send them out the following day. Just praying for Reverend Dick Bradshaw and his team there. Walk with us, Lord. Be by our side. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who are struggling at this time in mind, body or spirit. And we pray by name in this parish for John Ellison, Jessica McCaskill, Carrie Waggett, Doreen Moig, Andrew Garvick, Mrs Hewitt, Sid Harrison, Pat Middleton, Dorothy Macbeth, Stella Matthews, Michael Hughes, Chris Haynes, Tom McKenzie, Julie, John Pike, Anne Taylor, Rod Taylor, Carol Woodfield, Christine, Beatrice Yorston, Wynne Aldersleard, Grant and Sheena, Gillian, Mavis, Harriet Fraser, Grant Macbeth, Susan Fisher, Ruth Banks, James Shepherd, Marjorie Carruthers, Brian Henderson, Anne Henderson, Brenda Prophet, Stan, Gary, Jim, John Thorburn, Ashton, Marion, Betty Hall, Isla Mohammed, Gary Patterson, Jonathan Hall, and the people on our hearts today. May they know your healing presence in their lives, your comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And merciful Father, we pray for those who are most seriously ill today, anyone receiving end-of-life care, and for all who are caring for them. We pray for loved ones who may still be separated from them at this time. We pray for anyone for whom today they begin their journey, heaven bound. We ask you, Lord, to welcome them home with arms wide open. And we pray by name for the repose of the soul of Sue Vernell, Karen Atherton, Margaret Hoy, Josh, Shirley Granger, Margaret Lambert, Minnie Piner. As we commend them to you, as we commend all those we love, but no longer see, now wrapped up in your eternal care. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And our collect for today when the church remembers Matthias the Apostle. Almighty God, who in the place of the traitor Judas chose your faithful servant Matthias to be the number of the twelve, Preserve your church from false apostles and by the ministry of faithful pastors and teachers keep us steadfast in your truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Birds are very cheerful this morning, aren't they? It's a shame to talk over them. So thank you for all of your comments and your prayers and your prayers for one another. Thank you too for your contributions, Eileen. And that constant need to just pray, pray and check back all of the time. That's our prayer without ceasing, isn't it? And then, yes, sharing with others. Sharing with others. And listening to the discernment of others as well. Lots of prayers here this morning. So our next live stream service will be the service before we set out with the pilgrimage on Sunday morning. It will be nine o'clock and I'll upload the service booklet and give you a link to that in case you'd like to join us from wherever you are. And, um, and then that will be followed by our 10 o'clock service Sunday morning from St Paul's. So both of those services from St Paul's Church this Sunday. I hope you'll continue to pray for your five over the weekend. And it's lovely to see um, a lot of those little pieces of scripture and references in morning prayer that you would find at Thy Kingdom Come. And I will add the links for Thy Kingdom Come apps for you. So whatever you are doing today, I hope there will be a, a fabulous moment in there for you or two. Uh, and I just look forward to spending more time in person as well as online with folks as we move into the next stage of walking away from lockdown in England. So let me send you on this morning with God's blessing. Now we had a lovely blessing in the service last night. So I think I'll continue to use that throughout this nine days as we get ready for Pentecost. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those who you love this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace and light of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. See you soon. Bye-bye.